Well, thank you, Anna, for that beautiful piece of music to open our service with. Welcome to all of you out there. If it is your first time here, this is Church in Bethesda. My name is Ryan Phipps. Today is Sunday, May 2nd, 2021. And welcome back if you have been here before. We're going to listen to some more music now to put our hearts in the right mood, in the right spirit, and in the right place. Let's enjoy as we continue to worship. Thank you, Douglas, for that jazzy rendition of an old hymn that we're all probably familiar with. I really enjoyed that. Thanks, man. Well, we take time on the broadcast now every week to participate in something that we call the passing of the peace together here in this digital environment. We do that in the comments. If you are on Facebook, that's kind of over here, but down here below the description of the video. If you're on YouTube, it could be up here or it could be down below the video. If you're on our website, it's directly below the video. Whatever platform you are joining us on, let's all take a moment right now to type our greetings into the comments. Peace be with you.
Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día y perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal. Amén. Notre Père, qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite, sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonne-nous nos offenses, comme nous aussi nous pardonnons à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Ne nous induis pas en tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal, car c'est à toi qu'appartiennent dans tous les siècles le règne, la puissance et la gloire. Amen. Vater unser im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name, dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe, wie im Himmel, so auf der Erden. Aus unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute und vergib uns unsere Schuldigen. Und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern erlöse uns von den Bösen. Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft, dein Kraft und die Heiligkeit in, in Ewigkeit. Amen. Mujib bien ce que je Tu vas aller chercher des chèques, chamat cons. On te laisse la coma banzet. On te dit balé que là. Ben ne ma banzet. Quand tu fais des matches chib, à porte son acubobi. Mon camion est camaya bijou. Amen. Onze Vader, die in de hemelen zijt, uw naam wordt geheiligd. Uw koninkrijk komen. Uw wil geschieden gelijk in de hemel, al zo ook op aarde. Geef ons heden ons dagelijks brood en vergeef ons onze schulden, gelijk ook wij vergeven onze schuldenaren. En leid ons niet in verzoeking, maar verlos ons van de boze, want van u is het koninkrijk en de kracht en de heerlijkheid tot een eeuwigheid. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Well, thank you everyone for participating in that digital passing of the peace. It's good to see you and hear from you in those comments this morning. If you're just now clicking in to join us, my name is Ryan Phipps. This is Church in Bethesda. Thank you for joining us today. Our scripture passage today from the first epistle of John in the New Testament says this, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. A group of professionals once posed a question to a group of four to eight-year-olds, and that question was, what does love mean? And the answers they got were more strange and yet more profound than anyone could have ever imagined. Here's what a few of them said. Rebecca, age eight, said, Love is when my grandmother got arthritis. She couldn't bend over and paint her toenails anymore. So my grandfather does it for her all the time. 
even when his hands got arthritis too. Billy, age four, said, when someone loves you, the way they say your name is different. You just know that your name is safe in their mouth. What does that mean? And yet, strangely, that sounds true. Carl, age five, I love this one, says, love is when a girl puts on perfume and a boy puts on shaving cologne and they go out and they smell each other. <laughs> Chrissy, age six, says, love is when you go out and give somebody most of your French fries without making them give you any of theirs. Chrissy, that is true. Another uh, child by the name of Terry, age four, said, love is what makes you smile when you're tired. Bobby, age seven, says, Love is what's in the room with you at Christmas. If you stop opening presents and you listen. Elaine, age five, says, Love is when mommy gives daddy the best piece of chicken. Marianne, age four, Love is when your puppy licks your face even after you left him alone all day. And finally, my very favorite one, Karen, age seven. When you love somebody, your eyelashes go up and down and little stars come out of you. What does that mean? And yet I feel that that is true because that's how love feels. Most of these answers are adorable. A few of them are concerning. <laughs> but all of them are true. I don't think it's any coincidence that Jesus told people time and time again that if they wanted to experience God, they needed to become again like little children. Kids just say what they mean, and they mean what they say, and it is often profound to those of us who think we have it all figured out. How would you explain what love is to someone today? It's a difficult question, I think, because love starts really as a feeling within us. But if it ends there, if that feeling isn't put into some kind of action, or shared, no one will ever know that they are the object of our love. In fact, it could rightly be said that love that isn't put into action can never be realized, recognized, or received. I think that that's true. Think about your own life for a second. Think of anyone in your life about whom you would say, I know that they love me. How would you explain that? How would you articulate that? You would be very hard pressed to cite any example of their love that wasn't visible in some kind of behavior toward you, wouldn't you? This is true with all invisible things, I suppose, kind of like gravity. You can't hold gravity in your hand and say to someone, see, look, it's real, here it is. No, we only know that a thing called gravity is because of its effects on the visible world. And I think that it's the same with love. Love that isn't put into action can never be recognized, realized, or received. Of course, love might exist somewhere outside of us by itself, but that's really not even worth discussing if the only way we can recognize and realize it 
is by showing it to someone else or being the recipient of it ourselves. And this is what we see these children saying in their own clumsy but beautiful way. And this is what the Apostle John is trying to get across when he writes to the churches. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. For God is love. It's simple and it's clear. Anyone who shows love, anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. There's no list of doctrines to go along with that. There's no requisites that have to be checked off. Anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. You know, it, uh, for some strange reason, most of my closest friends in my life identify either as agnostics or non-practicing somethings. These are the friends that will sit up late with me, debating and discussing the things that made everyone else in the room say, I, I think I have an early appointment tomorrow, I need to be going. And then once those people leave, all of my true friends are there. They stick around and we talk about this stuff. And what I have learned from so many of my friends over the years is that what they believe is exactly what I believe. We just use different terminology to describe it. My friend Aaron would say, the church didn't invent goodness. People were good to one another long before God was even a thing. People loved their parents. Parents loved their kids before the Bible ever told them to. And he's right. They did. My friend Sarah would say that religions are necessary, even though she's not religious in the least. She would say that religions are necessary because they give different groups of people a shared language to talk about things for which there really is no vocabulary. That's brilliant and also, I believe, true. My friend Mike, who's a very just practical, say it like you mean it type of guy, my friend Mike would say that the point of life is to be nice, to be a good person, and to never take advantage of people. That is it. And I agree with that too. And then there is me, the pastor in the circle of friends, who often responds, yeah. I, I don't disagree with any of that. I agree with all of you. All of that to say what I'm trying to convey when I say the word God. I say it as a placeholder. It's a name for something that's really unnameable. But yet it comprises all of those good things that have just been said in this circle. Let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. You know that these words are intended to unite us and not divide us. You know that these words are trying to get us on the same page, to see the same big picture, despite our differences? You know that these words are trying to get us to work together, even though we use different terminology as individuals for ourselves? God is the source from which 
the medium through which and the action by which love is realized, recognized, and received. And all of this happens or doesn't happen through the behaviors of human beings. We are mysteriously and wonderfully made creatures who have the ability and the privilege to be able to give and receive love or to withhold it. How can you go out into your life this week and be a little bit easier on people who don't believe exactly what you do? Because that is the lesson in all of this. Do the people that you wish to convert to your way of thinking, living, and believing love their children? Do they love their siblings? Do they love their partners? Are they good neighbors? When you look at their lives, you see lives of kindness and goodness and justice and fairness reflected in them. If you do, they already know God. And if you can't take joy in that, if that bothers you that it's that simple, that they don't have to do something to work for it, I'm sorry to be so plain this morning, but they might actually know God better than you do. You can't deny them gravity, if you will. If they throw something up in the air and it falls back to the ground, they are a recipient. They are responding to gravity, even if they don't recognize it or call it gravity. If they are loving the people in their life, they are responding to God, even if they don't call it God yet. So this week, don't lecture them. Don't make it your life's mission to try to convert them to your particular way of living. Instead, join them in their loving. Love the world together alongside them, with them. The world will be so much better for it if we can think of it this way. Love that isn't put into action can never be realized, recognized, or received. So may we go out into our lives this week and get to work. As we receive of communion today, where we receive bread and wine, Symbols that remind us of the love of a God for a world, whether that world recognizes that love or not. May we take these words to heart. May they encourage us. May they challenge us. May they dull the parts of us that are too sharp and sharpen the parts of us that are too dull. As we listen, as we pray, as we respond and receive to the love of God this morning, may we let it work in us into being people of action and people who are looking all over the world where love is happening and saying, how can I partner with that? Amen.
Good morning, CIB. My name's Anna, and I am here to bring you our Just for Kids segment. So today, one of the scripture verses is 1 John 4, 21, and it says, And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. So God loves all of us so much. And because of his love for us, we're called to love our brother and sisters. Well, who are our brothers and sisters? Everybody in the world. Because God created all of us and he loves all of us and he wants us to love each other just the way that he loves us. So today I have a couple of activities for you. One of them is a maze shaped like a heart that I think is pretty cool. So that reminds us sometimes loving people is complicated. It's not always easy. Maybe we have to try different ways. Um, and maybe we have to go back and start over sometimes. But there's always a way forward. And there's always a way to show our love to each other. Another activity is that I have some questions for you to talk through and think about with your family. Um, it's mostly about sharing because sharing is one way that we can show love for each other. And then I would like to challenge you on the back of that page to draw a picture of you sharing something with someone. Um, and as you go through this week, think about how you can share with others to show them your love and that you care for them. Thanks and have a great week.
Well, thank you, Anna, for that wonderful lesson for our kiddos. And thank you, Douglas and Anna, for that music. As we close today, I want to ask if you would pray for me about something and pray for our leadership about something. This afternoon at 2 p.m., we are meeting online uh, on Zoom to discuss the reopening of church in Bethesda in some fashion. This past week, I don't know if you saw the news, but the CDC said for all people that are vaccinated, it is okay to begin gathering for worship indoors again. Of course, we don't want to be a church that's turning anyone away. So our leadership is gathering to discuss all of the ways that we might be able to gather where everyone that is there is safe. So please keep us in your prayers. We need wisdom, not just the wisdom of people, but also the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for praying for us. I will update you if you are on our uh, emailing list. I will update you this week with an email if we come to a resolution or we might continue discussing it another week. If you don't get those emails, the very easy way to sign up for them is go to churchinbethesda.org slash get hyphen updates, and you can subscribe to our e-newsletter there along with our uh, daily meditation email that we send out linking you to the transcript and the audio episode of our daily meditation podcast, Meditations for the Metro. While you're on our website, if you would like to donate to the amazing work that this church is continuing to do here in our nation's capital and beyond, you can click on the donate tab and see all the easy ways that you can contribute to the work of this community. Thank you to all of you out there who support us regularly, prayerfully and financially. We could not do the good things we're doing without your support. Right after this at noon, we hope to see you in our Zoom chat room for a half hour of fellowship. No matter what time zone, what part of the planet you are watching this from, you are invited and welcome to join us. There is a link to that in the description of this video. We would love to see your face, love to hear your voice, get to know you better, for you to get to know us better. So right after this broadcast at noon, click on that link. We hope to see you there. If we don't see you there, we'll see you right here again next Sunday. And until then, may you go in peace. May you make peace wherever you go. And may you be discerning enough to see the love and the life of God at work in everyone who is loving. Amen. <laughs>